Hey guys, what's up? This is Ken Susie here at Fishman Live. So far, we've had a lot of great guests, and um, we're just going to keep it rolling. Obviously, a lot of you guys are stuck at home practicing uh, social distancing. Some of you guys in other states may be at work or maybe attempting to go back to work, so that's, that's kind of cool. But um, just so you know, um, today we have a very special guest, and if you would like to ask him any questions, please go over to Twitter our Facebook or our YouTube page and you can you could ask any question you want on the stream but just remember that our artists today will not be seeing your questions I will be seeing your questions so if you have any questions please just throw them up there on the chat and we'll get going and I'll ask I'll ask our guests some questions so now we have Mr. Zach Myers from Shine Down amongst other projects with us today how you doing brother I'm good, man. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm quarantining at home. Yeah. Are you staying away from like your whole family or <laughs> just got it? <laughs> no, like I'll see like my family. So my brother actually had COVID. Oh, whoa. Um, he had, he had coronavirus. So, um, and he lives like 2000 feet across the lake behind me. And, um, yeah. And then, uh, so he's been over since like, cause he got cleared now. That's like, I can't get it from him, you know? So he's almost like the safest person to hang out with. So um, yeah, I'm seeing some of my family. We had we had a couple people over for the first time in like seven weeks. On Saturday, I cooked some crawfish, and we just everybody stayed outside. We had just one of two couples and the, their kids who are my my kids' friends, and that was it. Yeah, we've uh, we've been doing a really good job of staying at home, having groceries delivered. I cook a lot, so it's 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 kind of business as usual around here. I'm, I'm kind of. We were supposed to start a tour on April fifteenth, but I'm kind of happy to have the extra time with the kids. Yeah, you know? a lot of a lot of touring musicians so far. Are the ones that we've been um, that we've been interviewing kind of like has liked the time off in a sense because all of us musicians we're always so used to hustling and whether you're not on tour, you're in the studio writing a record or you're writing the record in your house. It's just one of those things like you never really get time off. So I'm yeah. assuming you're dealing with the same stuff, but that's pretty interesting that your brother contracted it it like how like what was his experiences like how, how sick did he get I, I mean i don't know i think it's gonna upset people when i tell them this he was sick for about 20 hours <laughs> that was he just had i mean he had a he had a fever of of 103 which he said he never really gets a fever his muscles were really sore and he basically said when he would when he would try to eat like he would like hunch over to like take a bite he felt like he couldn't breathe so he had shortness of breath fever body fatigue never really got a cough um, he's a lawyer, so he's always in and out of jail, mm -hmm. like, you know, like interviewing people. So he, that obviously that's probably where he contracted it, I'm guessing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it was honestly, he said it was, it was, it was like a semi miserable 24 hours and then he was all good. He went home from work, took a nap, woke up, had a fever, which never happens to him. So he got tested twice and had both times tested positive. That's and yeah, so that's crazy. So when did that, yeah. when did you look, it sounds like you live pretty close to him. So how did that, uh, like, okay, well my family lives in the same cul-de-sac, right? I live next to my brother and my sister lives on the other side of me. My parents are kind of in an in-law on my house. I, did you guys hang out all the time? Was it, was it kind of scary? Like, you know, knowing that he had, yeah. It? So he, he's kind of like favorite uncle, right? So it's, you know, like the kids love hanging out with him and he was here on a Monday and he took the test on Wednesday and found out he had it. So my wife is already a clean freak. She's like, once she found out he contracted, like cleaning the whole house, you know? So, um, but we, everybody, you know, we kind of remained vigilant with cleaning and washing our hands. And, you know, I think this thing is, I honestly, my personal belief, and, and I'm not a doctor or a scientist, I think we're on the other side yeah. of it um, with summer. I think that, you know, they've already released studies, from the, the highest scientists in the world said so this thing can't live it can't live on any surface over 78 to 80 degrees so i think we're on the other side of it obviously the numbers are going way down um which is great and um yeah i, I just you know remain vigilant wash your hands <laughs> yeah you know don't don't go sneezing on people and you know try to keep your distance as much as you can but yeah i mean it was it was kind of scary because my brother had it so like anytime like I, my throat hurt or i felt like i was <laughs> i was i was pretty uh it put me into like into like turbo hypochondriac for a minute. But. It's hard. It's hard not to even make jokes too, because like everyone sneezes, you know, everyone coughs. So you're around my house, I'm yeah. like, I sneeze, and I'm like, oh, I got it. That's it. <laughs> you know, time to go to the hospital. Dude, I live in I live in Tennessee, dude, and it was April and May, so like my allergies are on a dozen. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I'm sneezing a hundred times a day. 
So and like and like rubbing my nose, you know, and like my eyes because like I take like Zyrtec, but like it doesn't. We got a lot of land and like there's flowers blowing and pollen everywhere <laughs> and so i'm just like dying yeah exactly I, i'm the same way I'm, i think i have i have hay fever so i'm always using um i forget the name that nasal spray uh, it's not it maybe zyrtec oh uh yeah no it's uh Flonase. it's uh it's uh <laughs> Flonase or yeah. Yeah, Flonase does it for me. It's the only thing that does it for me or else I'll be sneezing and my eyes are red and scratching. But, but yeah. uh, oh, we, we have a question. Oh, not even a question. My One of my favorite guitar players of all time, Miss Jen Majura, showed up and she's so excited to see our live stream. And she just said hi to you. And she said she totally enjoyed that one time that you guys played a festival together. I don't know if you remember that time. Yeah. Yeah, it was in Philly. Yeah. Um, I remember that. No, they're great. We we love those. We love them, and uh, she's a killer, you know. So, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I remember that. That was in Philly. It was MMR MMR BQ. Nice. Yeah, Jen's one of those. Jen's one of those like players and or friend that like you you just she calls and you just you smile for about an hour or an hour and a half as long as you talk to her and then that's it. You get like your face hurts after you're done talking to her. That was my first time seeing her with them. And uh, yeah, she was great. It added a whole new element to the band, which, you know, I've, I've always loved them, but yeah, it added a whole new element to, to the band. I think to have another person up there with Amy that could kind of like, yeah. you know, they're like kind of playing off each other a little bit. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. No, no. Jen, yeah. Jen's a, Jen's a really good guitar player. Um, Timothy Russell just popped in and asked, what's your most important, important, piece of equipment that makes you feel uh makes you up the zach meyer sound I'm, I'm not sure what he's saying but he, i think he's just asking what kind of um gear that's important to you that gives you your signature sound i mean probably probably the signature prs for me like is is one of the i mean a top three coolest things that ever happened to me and um yeah i mean I, that's i play that guitar you know it's an se model it's it lit it msrp is under a thousand bucks and i play them the way they come man i have a couple with fishman fluence that you actually put in the fluence pickups in there and then and then i think eight of them are are stock i mean out of the box i put strap locks on them change the strings and that's that i play them how they come you know i, I never wanted to to have a signature guitar that i i played this different version of than what kids can buy in a store you know yeah. and so i we really did our due diligence and took our time on that second signature model and really made it what we wanted it to be. So, you know, if you wanted to change the pickups, that's fine. And a lot of people do because these also, my pickups are a little bit more modern and they're, they're a little hotter. They're not as vintage as, as some people would like. So a lot of people put different pickups in it. I've seen a bunch of people put Fishman's in it. I've seen a bunch of people put Duncan's yeah. in it. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it really is a personal purpose, but the guitar to me, that's like, that's the third arm. Yep. For sure. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Trevor is asking: Is the song at the end of the prelude a video demo of Dark Side, or is it a completely different track? Okay, so we just we just put this out like ten minutes oh, okay. ago. Okay, <laughs> um, uh, it's a we record. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to like. There's like trying to figure out what I can say. <laughs> um, that's shrouded in mystery. Um, it, we recorded a lot, of, you know, the, the last album was a concept album and it, it's a story from start to finish. So we recorded a lot of like integral pieces in between almost like interludes and preludes. Um, basically it's the, what the video that came out today is a, is a trailer for a movie that we made. And then the, 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 the song is just what was the, the, the prelude to dark side which is on the album. So yeah, I guess, I guess I, th I think I explained that the best way. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's, I want to, I want to know a little bit about you, about your career. Um, okay. so you joined the band after they put out, what was it? Two records or so. Uh, so I joined the band on the touring of the first album. So, um, in Oh four, I joined the band. It's just a touring guitar player. Like wasn't a member of the band, like didn't do meet and greets. I was a dude that got to ride the bus and, make a paycheck and play guitar and it was great. Yeah. And I joined the band officially in uh in 07. Okay. So 
as like a member. So of the what band. I, I'm always interested in people's stories as far as like where where they were prior to getting in the band, right? Like where what were you doing prior to get you know getting into Shine Down like that? Got their attention. I mean, were you a scene guy? Were you playing in a lot of groups? Like, were you a local guy? Were you in other bands that were touring? So the 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 quick the quick timeline is I got signed at 14 as like a blues guitar player. You know, like the Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Johnny Lang thing. Like that was my, that was kind of what I was doing. So did that. Then um, at about 19, uh, got out of, I basically didn't like the business side of it. And I found out that a lot of people at record labels are just truly just awful people. <laughs> and um, and so I got out of it and I was like, I, my, a buddy of mine needed a guitar tech. And I was like, well, I can, I can still tour yeah. and I can still make great money and I don't have to deal with the business side of it. And like, I never had an ego, you know, about, I, I know so many techs that are great players that like stand on the side. I'm like, Oh, I'm so much better than yep. this guy. Like that's so annoying, man. Like when I decided I was going to be a tech, that's what I was going to be. I was going to be a guitar tech. And I was like, I was happy to be there. I loved working on, I just love gear, man. I'm such a gear nerd as you could. I'm surrounded by a hundred guitars in this room. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, like for, for me, I just, I wanted to be a guitar tech. So I met shine down. I was, so I, I was, playing guitar i was playing bass for saliva and teching for three doors down on the same tour yep. so basically i didn't get to eat breakfast or lunch <laughs> i was just working the yeah. whole time and then shine down came out and opened for a couple shows and they saw me play bass and their bass player was having a baby and they asked if i could just fill in i was like well i'm not a bass player yeah. i was like i'm a guitar player but i was like if you need me to play bass i'll come play bass so we played a show in november i think it was 04 and um didn't rehearse didn't sound check uh, literally just went on stage cold, played 17 songs and did a little tour. And then at the end of that, uh, they asked me to join the band. That's crazy. So you were, so you did bass and then you then transitioned into being a guitar player for the band, right? And yeah. then you transitioned yeah. again, oh. you got, well, I'll call it a promotion, right? You went from rhythm to lead, right? Later on. I went from rhythm guitar player to the only guitar player. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I don't know if you'd call it a promotion as much as a more of a stressful situation. I, I feel like your life and and uh, you know, pardon me for being like funny about it, but you're like you know that game uh, that game uh, Rock Band. Like your yeah. life is legit. Yeah. Like the get like from going to the store and buying the game to the end of like beating it on experienced. I think that's your life, right? <laughs> yeah, I can't play rock band though, so that's or guitar hero. Yeah, but so. it's like it's, it's like you you should be on the cover, like a like a like an EA Sports yeah. Madden game. <laughs> I'll take that. I love EA Sports, so I'll I'll do yeah, I'll do that. Anytime. No, it's just cool. It's just cool because a lot of guys, you know, they they find their own way through the industry, and it's probably funny that you at one point decided, okay, I'm going to be a guitar tech. I'm going to live and die by that, and then like sure enough, you get drawn back into playing, and then the next thing you know, you're like, oh. This is like vacation. I'm I'm playing the instrument. I'm playing the instrument I want to play. This is amazing. Like, what? Like, is there any type of like, how I explain it? Psychological kind of like when you're a tech, you know you can get out there and do it. But did you just keep that like reserved for a while until the point? Like, how does the conversation come up though? Like, we need you to play bass. I, well, I was playing. You know, I was so through, saliva was opening for Three Doors Down, and I was guitar tech for Chris from Three Doors Down, and I was playing bass for Saliva, so I was kind of doing double duty. So I think they knew that I could play, and they had heard enough about like how I had gotten signed when I was younger. And so they were just like, hey, man, we know you can play bass. We know you're not a bass player, but can you fill in? And I was like, yeah, sure. That's fine. And I was, you know, I had already teched for Dirk Bentley at this point, Saliva, Three Doors Down, uh, Aerosmith, you know, so it was like, it was really cool to like be able to do those things. And, but when I started doing it, it, it was more like a fill in thing, you know, like I was never like, I was never a member of Salon, yeah. you know, like I was just, I was just filling in and it was fun. Those, those are hometown dudes. And, and so it was fun to do, but you know, at the end of playing bass for Shinedown, I was like, all right, I'm going to go back to my job now. Cause a, I make way more money. <laughs> yeah. Being a guitar tech. And Shinedown was still at the club level at that point. You know, we're, just, you know, 800 to a thousand seaters yep. in some markets, some markets could sell them out. And then, that's really it. So I was, you know, I was, I was happy to go back and do this gig and, and be a guitar tech. And, and then Brent, my singer was just like, he's like, you can't go like you, you have to come play rhythm guitar and then sing. And I was like, all right, so here we go. <laughs> and that was, that was kind of what happened. And it's yeah, 15 years yeah, later. Now you're living the are. dream. 
Now I've been yeah, now I've been in the band for 15 years and been a member for 13. Now would so you have made would you have made more money being a guitar tech than in the band if you stayed with it? Now no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing pretty well now. I'm Ken. just, I'm just kidding. Lie. I'm just kidding. Um, I, <laughs> it's okay. It's an okay gig. <laughs> I actually really like this question right here. Um, he's uh, Gina's writing. Hello. What kind of qualifications do you need to even become a guitar tech? What's what's the bare minimum uh, in your opinion? I mean, you you can answer this too. I mean, uh, you know, you're you're great at working on guitars. I think that you need to have a knowledge of guitars in general, um, and amps. Even though nowadays. You, it's not a lot. There's not a lot of amp guys. I think you got to work for like a, a, a legacy act maybe to even deal with some dude with an yeah. amp. Um, but I would say honestly in 2020 have a knowledge of fractal or Kemper or something like that, have some, a little bit of computer knowledge. And then honestly, the biggest thing for me, I think as a guitar tech, can you work good under pressure? Can you, you know, if something breaks and there's 10,000 people out there, how good are you with the, the weight just kind of pushing you down into the floor, yeah. you know, like, you know, I was for years, but I've had the same guitar tech for almost 11 years. And I, the, the first five years of our relationship was tumultuous would be an understatement because I was a tech, yep. right? So like I wasn't easy to work for. So like I, I expected a certain amount of listen and I was not the best guitar tech, but you know, I was the hardest worker in the yep. room. So I expected, you to give me that and when i didn't get it i would my guitar tech said that i had i had eyes that would just crush <laughs> a human being because <laughs> i would like just like glare but the truth is man you know like for me i just i expect excellence so it's like we've gotten better but like and now like it's opposite like i'll go back there if something goes wrong he's freaking out and i'm like hey man calm yeah. down it's, it's all good it's gonna be all good so my i would say i, I got off base a little bit my i think my have have as much guitar knowledge as you can about setting up um you know do you need to know about changing pickups right when you start as a guitar tech probably not yep. um but it, it would be a wise thing to know but here's the thing man when i started working on guitars and probably when you started working on guitars dude we didn't have youtube yep, yep. <laughs> we, dude, we just had to like go to the we had to go to a tech friend of ours and like look over his shoulder and be like how do you do that <laughs> yeah and now man like you got honestly, you got the the power of YouTube, dude. You could you can look up any of this stuff, and and I think it's it's a guitar play, it's a guitar text world right now. You can get on and learn anything. So, knowledge of guitars, knowledge of of, of digital rigs now, fractals, kippers, yep. and and a little bit of amp knowledge and, and signal path, and, and and don't buckle under pressure. Those are my guitar tech uh, wish yeah, lists. Yeah, I would even say knowing how to set up a pedal board in the sense that what goes before what, what comes after what. Signal path. One hundred percent. That's the one of the most important things. But um, we get another question from Danny Cooper. Zach, what is the what is the writing sessions like with Shine Shine Down? Um, they're they're different every time. So the way the writing works is either me and Brent, Eric, our bass player, and Brent, me, Brent, and our friend Dave Bassett, who's kind of like our our fifth Beatle, who's not in the band, who we write with a lot of time, and had a lot of his first big hits he wrote were with us which was on the sound of madness album but since then i mean he wrote x's and o's by l king he wrote fight song by rachel platt like he's written all these big songs so he's kind of like our he's almost like a band member who does never shows up you know he's just like our you know, he's like he doesn't show up to practice or shows but he's like in the band to us you know he's one of our best friends so um it, it'll be me dave and brent or eric dave and brent or eric and brent or, or me and brent yeah and that's usually how it happens uh barry our drummer is, is working on learning instruments and stuff and wants to write. But honestly, like on attention, attention, Barry added so much because, you know, we demo drums yep. on a keyboard, you know, and Barry came in and just really was the first record where we really let him kind of go off on his own. And, and before he kind of, the producers would kind of have a foot on him a little bit and be like, no, play it like how it is on the demo. And he'd get frustrated. We'd all get frustrated. But um, yeah, th this, Barry kind of made attention, attention, what it is. And to, again, today's the two year anniversary of that record. So it's, but, but Eric, Barry having free reign really changed the record. And there's a couple songs, especially like he actually got writing on credit on some stuff for just for drums, yep. which I never see happen, you know, and there's some bands that do it, split everything evenly. This band is, you know, you, you eat what you cook yep. and that's just how we do it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, 
there's some interesting facts about you that I wanted to ask you about. Oh, well, no, one of my buddy, one of my buddies actually owns an alpaca farm up the street from me, and we always like take the kids up there. Do you have a family-owned alpaca farm that you run? That no, I don't. You don't. Um, okay. All How right. does that work? I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell this. Okay, and it's not your fault. <laughs> so I I after you've been doing it for a long time, you, you, you know, you've been in bands your whole life. Like yeah. I have. So it's like, I, I, so I, I enjoy doing interviews like this. Yeah. Right. Cause I, we, we, we have met yeah. before we, we know each other. Um, there got to, there, there came to a point a couple of years ago. I just, I, I, I don't like doing interviews because it's the same. People always ask that shit. It, no, 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 no. It's the same things. Right. So it's just like, who are your influences? What's the record yeah, yeah. about? What, you know, like all this same stuff. Right. And you're just like, all right, like, like, what is this? You're like looking at the person and being like, what is this doing yeah. for you? Cause it's doing nothing for me. Like and plus now with the age of the internet, you can literally look all this stuff up. So I was joking to a fan yeah. one time and I said, that, I said that the bass player for, or maybe it was Robin Zander from cheap trick. Somebody said one time they go in interviews. They just said, just to make exciting. They said, well, why did you start cheap trick? And he said, well, my, my grandfather, invented pop tarts and i didn't want to be known as just the grandkid of the guy who invented pop tarts <laughs> so he, he made that up so you made up the alpaca so farm I, thing <laughs> i made up i said you know what i'm gonna say i own a llama farm and i joked about it to a fan and they put it on our wikipedia <laughs> and our publishers our publishers called me the next day he's like do you own a llama farm i was like no why he's like well it's on your wikipedia i said don't touch it keep it keep it on keep it on so um I'll do like these morning show interviews and it'll be like some, you know, weird and wacky guy. And he's like doing the interview and like, they'll, they'll start asking about the shoes and then they'll go to the alpaca <laughs> farm. And... Well, I had to, Here we I, go. Had, I, know it's I had to ask you cause it's, it's, it's oddly, it's weird that I'm actually into alpacas. I like, like I have a yeah. friend that plays on my soccer team and he's like, he's this young guy and he, he literally has like, eight alpacas in his, hu- in his house and i always go over there and check them out and i was like w- yeah awesome. and uh, i i was looking at this list over here of a couple interesting things about you and i was like well don't come to my house because I don't. <laughs> no any. i'm gonna bring some to your house and make you an- <laughs> bring some we got enough land dude. we're good we the alpacas it. drink we got we have to check it out <laughs> yeah we gotta, we gotta make sure we gotta drink with them no that's that's hilarious because if you ever watch one of my interviews especially on youtube like i always i feel the same way it's like you get interviewed by somebody and it's always the same shit, right? And it's like, it's not about my band. I mean, it is about my band, but like, it's about your interview. But it's the most generic, like, yeah, you're interviewing. Who wants to know? Yeah, you're interviewing me in my band. So let's talk about me. Why is the name <laughs> of your band? On I know. It's because I don't even know. My, it's, uh, I'm you saying, know, like, it's, it's like, dumb. You've answered these questions a hundred thousand times. So it's like, you know, I, I'll get to this point where like I became, there was a while and I'm still a little bit. I, I love Kanye West, yeah. right? Like huge Kanye West fan. Not just music, personality yeah. too, which a lot of people but like same thing, like I'm obsessed with the Gallagher yep. brothers. Because part of me, and I I think any artist is truly deep down like this. You want part of me wants to go into an interview sometimes and just be the most honest person yep. I can be, whether it sounds like a complete <laughs> asshole or not. Yeah. I like, Hey, what do you think about this band? I think they're garbage. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like you, you want to have that kind of Oasis, like Kanye thing. So it's like, I can't do that. So like, I might as well just make stuff up. And like, I like I've said stuff in interviews, like where I've just literally made it. That's up. amazing. And like, it's funny to me. Cause I'm like, and then, and then it'll come up in another interview and I'm like, Oh dude, don't, don't, don't get me started. Like half of my career is on uh, YouTube and the things that I've said on in, in interviews, I'm surprised Fishman hired me. <laughs> actually actually larry larry fishman one time was uh we were he and i were like you know it was late one night and we were having a conversation and i i made a comment like oh you know i'm surprised you guys hired me here kind of thing and he's like oh i know all about you and sure enough he like he told me some stuff that he saw online i was like oh man <laughs> yeah dude it's it's funny man it's it's when you this interview thing is like it's so random and weird sometimes and you just you know like you, you know what i mean like it's it becomes you know, we, we've been blessed enough now where, where we mostly just play arenas and, and amphitheaters. So it's like, but you get up and you do the thing. And then when the record comes out, you do the press tour. And it's like, you're sitting there for five hours answering the same questions from 40 different people. And you're like, I'm going to start making some stuff I up. know. I like, know. It's just, and it's like, listen, it's funny, man. Cause it's like, I'm not, it's not harming anybody. I'll just like, 
I said the alpaca thing one time. I've said all, dude, I've said all kinds of stupid things. <laughs> no, I'm glad. I, I, that was the only thing I wanted to ask you out of this interesting fact. That's why I said it was an interesting fact. Cause if it was, it's interesting. Like, do you know Ben Wyman from uh, Dillinger escape plan? Yes. That dude straight up. Like, I mean, he's, he's playing in two South Tennessee's now, but he, Oh, I didn't even know, but he owns a farm. Like I legit, That's I awesome. legit saw, if you go to Ben Wyman's Instagram, it's a video of him bringing feet like food into some barn and he has a goat and the goat literally rams him from behind and smashes him through a wall of his barn. And I'm like, this dude's hardcore. <laughs> Dude, that's like real farming. <laughs> Most of the interesting facts about me are true. Um, I, I'm obsessed with basketball. Um, I have a shoe collection rivaled by maybe five people in the entire world. Really? What do you, um, what, what, what particular I, brand? Is it Nike? Uh, Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, I signed to Jordan um, in 2015. Yep. My sneaker room is over here. <laughs> um, it is uh, it is it is very big. My son actually, my four year old, the other day goes, "How many shoes are in here?" I said, "I don't know." He goes, "Well, you, you should count them." And I was like, "No." And he's like, "Count them." And so I counted. And there's like, I think there's 497 pair in the sneaker closet. Damn. Which means there's probably about 800 pair and all you gotta i gotta know i gotta know this because i never understood the shoe thing i'm not a shoe guy but i yeah. understand the guitar thing because i i heard you have a sick collection but like the shoe thing is weird to me it's like are you collecting them to sell them are you collecting them to wear them and if you wear them do you feel weird about wearing them because you're only gonna be like ruining them right so my my what are your shoe rules what are your shoe rules i don't have any <laughs> i'll never pay i've never paid um over two hundred dollars, two hundred dollars over retail for anything, yep. and I've got shoes that are worth twenty five thousand dollars. Really? Um, yeah, easy. And um, and I wear all of them, you know. So like my thing with shoes is it was about it was a, it wasn't necessarily when I started it wasn't about the culture of sneakers. It was about Michael Jordan. Yep. I'm a I'm an eighties kid, you know. So like I grew up like this Last Dance documentary, Best thing in the like world. dude. I want this shit to never end. <laughs> like, I want there for real. Like, because how old are you? Uh, I'm 41, but I'm watching the same thing. I love it. Okay, so we're we're close to the yeah. same age. Like, I'm I'll be 37 this year. So like, it is for me. Like, it brings back some of the best childhood memories I have. And I'm like, I I do not want this thing to ever yeah. end. Like, I wish this was just a permanent documentary. Because a, um, I've gotten to meet Michael. You, Michael is Michael doesn't sign yep. stuff. I mean, he does, but like. Yeah. He ain't like he ain't just signing stuff for random people. Like you got to know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. <laughs> Unless you're like a little kid, dude, he ain't signing nothing for you because he don't want you to make money off yeah. of him, which I understand. But and then like his thing is for me. But anyway, back to the shoes. It was about him, right? So like that's why I love the shoes, and that's why I started getting into collecting shoes. And then it became more about the culture and and the whole thing. So when I got my own shoe, um, two years ago, it was like so like kids. Yep. My own PRS, my own Air Jordan. Like that yep. was the pinnacle of all three things. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I wear every I wear every single pair, man. Like I don't really have rules. Like I'll I wear all of them. You know, it's I don't sell any of them. I give a lot away because Jordan will send me a box every couple of weeks and, and some stuff I just got too much stuff and some stuff I just I'll have doubles of and I'll give it to fam, friends and family for free. And like, like Michael Jordan himself or Nike? Um, or Nike. Uh, well, I mean, sorry, Michael Jordan. You said Jordan sends you shoes, like oh, sorry, the, the company. company. I was gonna yeah. say, did, no, Michael Jordan. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He doesn't give person. autographs, but he's handing you shoes. I'm like, wait, that's. I met him. I met him one time. We're not. <laughs> I was gonna good. say that was a sick flex. If so, um, yeah, no, no, no. I, said, I, I wish. Um, I, he probably knows my name just because he had to approve uh, my yeah. shoe that I did. But yeah. you get okay. So I, I don't usually ask sports questions on this, but I'm just gonna go for it. I. I'm an 80s, like, say, wrestling guy. I'm an 80s basketball guy. In the 90s, Same. thousands, kind of lost basketball. I'm, I'm a hockey guy. I'm football. I love soccer. So let's talk basketball for a second. Do you, I mean, I personally think that Jordan's the greatest of all time, hands down. But there's always that conversation of Jordan and LeBron James. What's what's your take on this? Listen, I, I think being the greatest of all time has many intangibles. I think it's not just about, listen, if Michael played LeBron one on one right now, would LeBron probably physically dominate? I'm saying him? in their prime, probably. in their prime, both of them in their prime, even in their prime, probably because LeBron. So I have courtside season tickets to the Grizzlies. I have for 15 yep. years. 
I've sat there from me to my phone right now. My phone would be LeBron and watch LeBron inbound a ball. And I, I tell people this all the time. If life was like NBA 2K, yep. right? And you could create your own character, yep. like a video yeah. game, you would pick LeBron James' body 10 out of 10 times. I don't care what Well, he's, he's built like a linebacker. The, the dude, it looks like God crafted his body yeah. with like, with like sculpt. Like it is, it is the most, I sound so weird saying <laughs> this right now. It's like the most, the dude has like the most perfect body. I would probably be a couple inches shorter. I think he's six. Can nine. I make a sound clip out of um, this? I'd probably be like six. I have to what? make a sound clip out of this section. <laughs> yes, please do. I, um, but yeah, so like, I, would he physically done it? Do I think Michael Jordan is better at the game of basketball? I do. Yeah. Um, I think he. I think it's all the intangibles. But what? 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 You know, championships make you the greatest all the time. People go, "Well, Jordan had Pippen." I'm like, dude, LeBron had. Et- LeBron had Chris Bosh. He had yep. Dwayne Wade. Then he had Tristan Thompson. He had he had Kyle Korver. He had uh, Kevin Love. He had Kyrie Irving. He stacked. He ain't never won a championship just by himself. Yep. <laughs> Like, bro, like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, you know, like all these, like Steve Kerr wasn't winning a championship just for shooting threes. Like, yeah, he had Pippen, but like, dude, all LeBron had all these guys too. To me in 20 years is, are people going to be waiting in 20 years to go buy a LeBron shoe on Saturday morning? No, no, no. Are people going to be waiting in 20 years to go buy a Jordan shoe? Still 100%. So Jordan's the greatest player of all time. And LeBron can happily be the second greatest player of all time. Fine with that. I think Kobe's the third, personally, for me. Kareem. Um, Don't forget Kareem, Magic, Bird. I, I love all Will those Chamberlain. Games, but like, I think – I think I look at Magic on Kobe, and I'm like, I'm taking Kobe 80, 99%. I want Shaq. Because like, I, I, I feel Shaq can't be stopped at all. Shaq's the great – to me, Shaq's the greatest big man of all time by, by a long shot. Shaq – young Shaq was a – Orlando Magic Shaq was a cheat yeah. code. Like, that guy, like <laughs> – Utterly ridiculous, one of the best in the world. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, I, I I can have the basketball conversation all day, dude. That's that's, that's my that's my jam. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad we uh we we got that. I got that off my chest. I'm glad you got that off your chest. Let's let's talk about gear. You you you've been using Fishman gear a lot. You mentioned the Fluence pickups and that you've been using them. What else are you using of ours? Uh, I use the Rare Earth stuff. Um, I use one of every uh, DI. Um, the Aura Spectrum, the Platinum, uh, I use all that stuff. I use a Jerry Douglas on my, uh, my banjo actually, instead of my Dobro. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, everything, man, I, I, I have, I use the, the, the delay. Um, and I actually just ordered the little, uh, P, you know, everyone's going live and doing all these live things. I've been going live to, to raise money for frontline workers and, um, which is like, so I'll, I'll get a local restaurant, which will in turn keep the local restaurant in business, give them couple thousand bucks and then they'll bring you know meals to hospital workers clinic workers animal hospital workers post office employees grocery store employees and like give them food so i've been raising money for that so i just ordered the fishman the a330x or s uh, pa yep. ordered that and uh, so yeah i'm i'm I, I, a ton ton of fishman things. that's amazing that's amazing well before i let and my loud box right here. I got a loud box literally right there. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, no, we're, we're so happy that you've been using our gear. Before we let you go, because uh, uh, I, I, we're, we're past 30 minutes, but um, I would like to have you play a song if you're still cool with that. And that's uh, – so you're going to play something that you're doing for your, your own personal project, right? I think I was going to, but now, like, I was just thinking about something. And I – so I'm, like, a huge um, John Prine fan. Whoa, cool. And uh, and he passed a couple weeks ago, and it was like one of the hardest for me. Like the, the three hardest musically for me have been Prime, Petty, and Prince. Yep. You know that like for me personally. So um, I was gonna do one of my own, but I I think I'm gonna do this Prime song because I was I was fishing earlier this morning and I was listening to it, and I was like, seemed like the right time to well, do it. So I think I'll do this one. Uh, this is all called Paradise. Nice. There's a rare earth too in there. <laughs> when I was a child, my family would travel down to western Kentucky where my parents were born. That was old town that's soft and mental. 
So many times my memories are warm. Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County? Down by the Green River where Paradise lays. I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late for that. Everybody's green is hard it way. Sometimes we travel right down the Green River, abandoned old prison down by Adrian Hill. Where the air smell like snakes and we shoot with our pistols. Empty pop bottles is all we would kill. And daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River where Paradise lay. Sorry, my son, but you're too late to ask. Mr. Peabody's cold train's hauled it away. Well, the coal company came with the world's large show, torched all the timber and stripped all the land. They dug for their coal till the land was for sale. Wrote it all down as the progress of man. Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River, where Paradise lay? Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late to ask Mr. Peabody's coat train has hauled it away. When I dial in my ashes to flow down the Green River, let my soul go on up to the Rochester Dam. Halfway to hit paradise way, five miles away from wherever I am. Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River, where paradise lays. I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late to ask me. Mr. Peabody's coat train has hauled it away. Mr. Peabody's coat train has hauled it away. Peabody's coat train is hauled it anyway. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> well, literally, the feet just totally lit up with a bunch of like horns, like the, yeah. the Satanist horns, and then the I love yous, and then the waves. Yeah. So we call it the the uh, the digital the digital circle. Right <laughs> That's what you just got. It was a it's a yeah, massive it pit you didn't even call for it. So you know you're good when that happens. <laughs> yeah, man. John Prime does it to people. <laughs> well, listen, Zach, thank you so much, guys. This was another episode of Fishman Live. Please just join us for uh, all of our future feeds. Keep your eye on social media. But again, Zach, thank you so much. And keep uh, make sure you keep safe, and we'll see you on the road soon. All right, bud? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Take it easy, brother. Later. Yep.